Hey everyone, welcome back to Pine Hollow Auto Diagnostics. Real quick one today, I'm doing one for a local shop. 2020 GMC Yukon XL Denali. Has a problem with the side object detection system. No communication with the left or the right modules that live in the corners of the bumpers. What's the history of the truck? Um, it was involved in a rear-end collision. It was in the body shop. They, you know, did all the body work and replaced the right side object detection module. Everything was good. No codes. Tri truck drove fine for a few months. Then it came up with this code. No communication with the side object detection system. What they found was the harness became detached and melted on the exhaust. Uh oh. So then the shop owner's like, well, it's our fault we didn't attach the harness properly. So what they did was, by then, apparently, bought a pigtail and spliced to like 20 wires here into the new pigtail. And all the wires, um, you know, there were no extra wires or anything. And then they also replaced the entire bumper harness. So from here to the side object detection modules and everything else. After that, side object system still did not work. So then he called me up, like, did we do a good job with the wiring repairs? Um, well, <laughs> what does a module need to communicate? So this is the pigtail, and this is what the little side object module looks like. Eight pin connector, right, pretty simple. Um, powers and grounds, that's what we need, powers and grounds. And diagram for the system. So there's a left module that talks on the GM land, just a single green wire, the low speed. And then from there, it talks to the right. So left to right is two wire communication. And then to the car is just a single green wire. Okay, so that makes sense. I measured power ground, lit up my test light, I put a scope on the green wire here. We can even look at that. Communication was perfect. So, if the vehicle says, can't talk to the left module, powers and grounds and communication check out at the module, you're gonna call the module, right? Well, they bought a new module, here it is, brand new. Plugged it in, same problem. So, the follow-up for the diagnosis was, Let's do a little more digging. Turns out there are two different systems for this year, model year. Two different RPO codes, a Z75 and a Z88, or something like that. So, on my phone, if you scan the QR code by the VIN, you see this truck is equipped with Z82 and Z88, not Z75. However, this diagram, the one that matches the bumper harness, is UKC plus Z75. The other diagram for Z88, it has also eight pins on each module, but look, the pinouts are completely different. The communication wire here is on pin six, power and ground is on pin eight and three, versus the Z75, which is powers and grounds is on pin 8 and 7, and communication is on pin 1. So, this harness is for Z75. The RPO VIN sticker is telling me Z88. So, that kind of clicked because once they replaced that whole rear bumper harness, side object detection system never came back online. And the shop owner said he ordered it by the VIN. The harness, you know, fit perfectly, plugged in. It sure did. Um, but it's not the right harness for this vehicle. So, and I asked him last time, this is my second trip here, because the first time I called the bad module and that didn't fix it. Um, I asked him, do you have the original bumper harness? It would be nice just to compare the connectors to see if the wires are the same. Unfortunately, he did not. Usually he saves them. This time, um, 
didn't save the harness. So I would have been done last time if we had the original harness, but now we did a little more digging. So this truck, to be fixed right, needs the correct rear bumper harness. So moral of the story, don't throw away any old parts until the vehicle is guaranteed, you know, sent out the door and fixed, no warnings, no anything. Um, moral of the story. So thanks all for watching, we'll see you in the next one, bye bye. Oh, a little bonus footage. So this is the original module, and I repinned it like the Z88 diagram shows. So powers and grounds on pin eight and three, and communication on pin six, and then it's just spliced into this wrong bumper harness. And check it out. Now we can talk to the left module. You know, read fault codes, whatever. Um, it's not saying any codes, even though. It's disconnected from the right module, but let me see read module information. It's back online. Amazing. So that proves that this harness is incorrect for this truck. Hey everyone, welcome back to Pine Hollow Auto Diagnostics. We got a Chevy Equinox here. The body shop replaced the roof on it. Never heard of that procedure before, but apparently that's a thing. And now they say the TPMS and the keyless key fobs don't work. So, a little preliminary research shows us that right here, right by the mirror, this is our keyless door lock receiver. Now what is um, the trouble code here? This B3101 tire pressure remote control door lock receiver data circuit. So obviously you want to pull up a wiring diagram of this remote controlled door lock receiver. There's the antenna and then we have four wires going to the body control module. So you see there's a supply B positive and the ground that's on pin 4 is the light green pin 1 is the light blue and white and then we have two data lines so it's fussing about the data circuit okay the data circuit is this gray wire and a pink and white wire okay so considering there's work done to the roof and we have pretty easy access to the harness uh, going along the A pillar to this door lock receiver, I just want to do a harness integrity check before going too far, you know, with this uh, diagnosis. That's the first thing you want to do. Whatever was touched and then the problem started, that's where we're looking. So first you want to see, uh, this does not have the UFL code. So we do have connector X300. And if you look up the connector locations, that's uh, number two here connector X300 that's the one I have unplugged after taking off this trim piece okay so we have four wires here the colors match up we have four wires here so how would you do a wiring integrity check it's very tempting to just grab an ohm meter let's grab an ohm meter see if there's continuity between all the you know wires basically uh, four checks and then um, We'll see if that checks out. If it does, we'll try another test. All right, so very basic check. We have the blue and white wire, back probe here, and then blue and white wire, or front probe with a fine pin. And you wanna see less than one ohm. So 0 0.4, I'm happy with that. Let's just keep moving along the line here. So let's check the second pin, which is a green wire. Have that, and then use this probe to check the green. Okay, 0 0.8, 0 0.7, I'm fine with that. Next wire is a gray, so we're almost done. So then gray to gray. Again, it's easier to do it two-handed. We're just holding the camera, and Okay, 
So that checks out. And one more. The pink wire, or pink and white. That's the third pin. Okay, perfect, right? So all the wires are continuous. However, was that a valid check? Well, yes, for continuity, but circuit integrity means more than that. Maybe it's just one strand. Maybe the wire got, harness got pinched by the roof, and then, you know, there's still a single strand connecting, and when the circuit's powered on, you lose a signal. So what is a better way to check wiring integrity than an ohmmeter? You guessed it, test lights. So you're gonna need two test lights. I like to use the 300 milliamp uh, test lights here. So my little baby test light is connected to pin 16 at the DLC. So if it finds a ground, that test light's gonna light up. And my other test light, let's just use Old Faithful here. We'll connect that to, I don't know, door jam. Just quick and dirty. As test lights don't lie. Um, there you go. So if both, see the little one is dim, this one is pretty bright. So if there's continuity, both test lights are going to light up. So let's do the same test now. Instead of the ohm meter, we'll use the test light to feed voltage into this harness. Now it's unplugged, obviously, you're not going to hurt anything. Um, and then we'll use the other test light to measure the other wire. And if there is good continuity, we should be able to carry at least 300 milliamps. And it's not a high amp circuit, but it should carry some current. So now I'm on the blue and white. If I probe the blue and white right here, now my test light might not fit. We might have to come in from the back. Um, let me rig something up so I can put the camera down. All right, so there's the blue and white wire. Test lights lit up, so that wiring integrity checks out on the blue and white. I'm gonna move the baby test light power feed to the green. Again, we got a test light, so that wire checks out. Next wire is gray, and I noticed something on the gray wire. <laughs> Look, this is lit up brightly, and we're not even grounding this side. Well, that's a red flag. I'm sure this test light won't light because that current's just going to ground. Last wire, pink and white. So that one is good. So the gray wire, even though it's continuous, it's shorted to ground. So let's put our test light on the gray wire and keep it there. So basically, as long as this test light's lit, we're short at the ground. Now, what we can do is just look at it and then maybe touch the, the headliner. We could take off this console. I mean, the wire I'm sure goes somewhere along the pillar. You know, it comes here, 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 here. There's a hard short to ground on that wire. So that right there, we just found the problem, not with an ohmmeter, but with test lights. If you're doing wiring integrity checks, leave the ohmmeter in the toolbox, use test lights. You want to make sure those wires can carry some current. I've seen many times where the ohmmeter says, hey, you're fine, but there could be other problems. Like in this case, that wire is pinched somewhere and shorted to ground. You'd never find out with an ohmmeter, well, unless you check, you know, resistance to ground. Um, but with a test light, you instantly get a visual, uh, hey, that current's going somewhere where it's not supposed to. So let's try to find this short to ground.